Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Family Parish celebration of the Holy Mass. COVID-19 is still prevalent in our area. Please wear your face coverings when inside the church building. Exceptions would be for health reasons. Thank you. For the Learning Center Capital Campaign, we are at, excitingly, 91% of our goal to reach the matching funds. If you haven't filled out a pledge card yet, please go to the table in the narthex to do this. Make a pledge for your children, your grandchildren, generations to come. Your reward will be great in heaven. Holy Family Parish is moving the Holy Mass on Tuesday morning from 8.30 to 6.30 a.m., starting February 23rd. The main intent in changing this time is to offer a Mass for those who would like to attend Mass for work or before the school day starts. Beginning your day with the Holy Mass is an awesome way to jumpstart your day. Everyone is welcome. The Lenten, Lenten season is coming up fast. Anyone interested in leading the Stations of the Cross on Fridays during Lent at 9 a.m. or Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. is invited to sign up on the sheet in the north. We come together each Sunday. Each of us come realizing that we cannot make it in this world on our own. But we are a faith-filled people, trusting in the Lord our Savior, whom we know is here with us, as we gather together. With that knowledge, we celebrate the Eucharist today as a holy family, giving thanks to God, receiving our Lord in his body and blood, and going forth to others, renewed in our mission as disciples who proclaim the word, prayerfully worship, compassionately serve. Our opening entrance is, gather us in number 236. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, 
for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. When, then, is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right of the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases. He drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left. And he went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And on finding him, said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you. As I grew up, we always heard about this small, holy woman from India named Mother Teresa. She seemed like she was a model for all the Catholics in the world, someone to look at and say, wow, that's what it means to be holy. You see, she chose a vocation to work with people who are dying. All day long, she would spend time with people who were at the last stages of their life. And it was her goal to give them dignity and to help them in any way that she could. Then she would be with them at the moment when it happened. Her sisters worked with lepers, AIDS patients, cancer victims. And it began with street people that they just poked took off the street who were dying. When she was asked one time, how are you able to cope with all the despair and tragedy that you experience every day? How can you do that without becoming bitter and cynical? Her response always was, each morning I would go to the well and get the strength and the refreshment that I need. 
This means that every morning when she began her day, she would begin it with a long period of silent prayer. She would do that even before she went to Mass. Her prayer time then would give her that strength, that comfort, that knowledge that God is always with her. And it was through this that she gained the hope that she was able to, to love others throughout the day. She went to the well. Each of us know what it's like to be physically thirsty, to want that drink of water, to be so drained of energy because we are, that it's even difficult to continue onward. And we know how wonderful it is to feel, it feels when you finally have that drink and how satisfying it is and how you can just feel your strength all coming back to you. Today, we're looking at how we can satisfy our spiritual thirst in the same way. But the first thing we need to confront is many will people, people will even say, I don't even have a spiritual thirst. I never even give that a second thought. Now, there is a reason why many people are not aware of that spiritual dimension in their life. And I think one of the big reasons is we in our modern age often have a fear of silence. It is in silence that we hear God call. In the car, the radio automatically goes on. In our home, we turn on the TV just so there's noise in the background. When we're with someone, we're uncomfortable. When there's no conversation goes on, we always do something to cover up the silence. So I began to think about this. Why do we fear silence? Why do we fear that, that being in solitude? I think one of the reasons is it is there that we encounter God. We have, we have this fear of actually encountering God because God can be scary. In all that glory and majesty, when we come before God, some people often think, I'm not even worthy to be in his presence. They forget that God created them in his image and likeness, and God is love. But not only do we encounter God in silence and solitude, we also confront ourselves. Being alone with ourselves is often more frightening than being alone with God. We're forced to ask those questions. Why am I the way I am? Why do I do that? Who am I? Where am I going in my life? Being alone forces us to confront ourselves. When we ignore our spiritual thirst... We try to quench it with all the things we try to bring up in our lives. Uh, we, we will often, we'll often think, wow, I'll only be happy if I have, then you name it, you've all been there. And then once you finally have whatever you think will give you that ultimate happiness, you realize it doesn't make you happy, and you go to the next thing. It's almost as if we're dying of thirst, but we don't know what we're thirsty for. So before we can even recognize our thirst, we have to overcome that fear of silence and solid. To get an insight of going to the well in prayer where we can encounter God, let's look at the gospel for a moment. In the gospel, we see Jesus leading a very busy day. He spent the entire day at the synagogue preaching and healing, and then he finally gets to Simon's house. He heals Simon's mother-in-law, and then it says the entire town went there, stood by the door, bringing their sick to be healed, bringing those who needed to have an exorcism and demons expelled. Just think, and he preached and preached and talked and healed. He's leading such a frantic pace. 
I'm sure at the end of the night he was just ready to collapse. But then it says, very early the next morning, while it was still dark, before the dawn, Jesus got up and went to a quiet place to pray. To spend some time with his heavenly Father. To go to the well and get strength for another day that he will, that will have the same frantic pace. Even Jesus needed time to pray. Now, as I was reading about that pace of Jesus' life, going from one thing to the next, all I could think about was, I'm sure that that's a lot how it is with families with children. Running here and there, chaperoning them to the basketball game, to the dance, to music lessons, refereeing throughout the day, keeping them entertained, struggling to get them into bed, and then finally making it back to the living room in the evening, collapsing into that big cushy chair, and that's often when the TV goes on and the mind goes numb. If we pay attention to what Jesus did, that might be a good time to have silence, solitude, prayer. A time to go to the well. Why do we pray? Many people will pray because they'll say, I need that, pre that peace. I need that wisdom, that strength. I need that help that only comes from God. And these are great reasons to pray. But we, because we often get peace and wisdom, strength and help. But then I was reading Job. In our first reading, Job, when he prays, he got none of those gifts. Just think, his family had all died. His wealth was all destroyed. His body was covered with sores. Even his friends were standing around him, attacking him, saying he deserved what he got. Yet Job prayed. Job prayed because he loved God, and no tragedy, no tragedy can take that away. So my hope would be that would be our true reason to pray. Each of us here, we love God, and our goal is to spend time with the one we love. Job would go to the well, and there he would find his love for God. So this is the primary reason we pray. I mean, we can also, the peace and wisdom and strength and the help, they're all gifts that we can receive by spending time with God. But love is always the central reason. Jesus, in another story, he encountered the Samaritan woman at the well. And he promised to give her life-giving water. He offers that same gift to each of us. So let us go to the well. Let us encounter Jesus Christ, the love of God, and let that love of God work in your life. Then, and only then, will your thirst be satisfied. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ. So let us now stand and publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we turn to God with our prayers. That the church, the seed of the kingdom inaugurated by Christ, may be nourished by his grace to grow in unity and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government and public health officials may be granted wisdom and strength in their efforts to manage the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin the bishop's appeal, let us pray for our many brothers and sisters who need our help through the appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may be blessed by the Spirit with love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in our holy family parish boundaries, both living and the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we come before you with these prayers and the prayers we hold deep in our hearts. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing 259, Make Us True Servants. Make us true servants to all those in need. Him with compassion, in thought, word, and deed. Loving our neighbor, whatever the cause. Feeding the hungry and finding the lost. Lord, make us prophets to cry out the way, telling the nation of mercies today. Let us make barriers of hatred and scorn, seeking a hope to all people forlorn. Lord, make us Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that, we may become, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he, 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. For you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
My peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be present at the celebration of Mass today, a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be consoled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall have their fill. Please join in singing the communion song, which is number 237, Jesus Christ by Faith Revealed. Thank you. 
we, our Holy Family Parish, and as Holy Family Parish, one of our goals is to develop that spirituality of the Holy Family itself so that our families can become Holy Families. One of the ways we do this is every month we bless everyone who's having an anniversary because those celebrations are important to have so that we can recognize that the family is the very core of our culture and how important it is. So with that, uh, I would ask you if you know anyone who is having a, an anniversary this month who may not be here, if you could call them up in prayer and pray for them. And if there's anyone here who has an anniversary this month, I would invite you to please stand for a blessing. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign for your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look with favor on all these couples whom you have united in marriage in good times and in bad May they grow in love for each other, and may they resolve to be of one heart in a bond of peace. In their struggles, let them rejoice that you are there to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. And in their joys, let them see that you are the source of every happiness. Grant peace and comfort to those who have lost their loved ones as they remember their anniversaries this month. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's also that time of year uh, again. Uh, uh, this week we're starting our annual Bishop's Appeal Fund. Uh, the, our, that annual campaign we do every year, which supports all of those wonderful programs that the, bish that the diocese does through the bishop. Uh, many of these are the programs that are too expensive for each individual parish to do. So we all pool our money together so that we can offer all the parishes these, these wonderful opportunities. These are such things as Camp Tekawitha. We send young people to Camp Tekawitha every year. However, we can't afford to run an entire camp ourselves. This includes things like professional counseling. We don't have a professional counselor to help people who are struggling with deeper things. And even like uh, financial counseling that also supports Catholic charities. There are so many things that this, that this appeal supports. Anytime that we have issues with school, with faith formation, with anything, they are there to help us with our own ministries in our parish. So the bishop's appeal is very important to our parish as a whole, but also to individuals who it helps. The appeal is very important. So I always like to begin the campaign by just thanking everyone who gave generously last year. Uh, I, I've been learning as I've been here. This is a very generous parish. We made our goal last year. That's an exciting thing to do. Uh, not all parishes do that. So, and it's not just the amount that people gave. What, what really impresses me as a pastor is the percentage of the people in the parish who participate in giving to the bishop's appeal. It, it's... it's the fact that everybody wants to seem to support this and everyone wants to be involved, no matter what the size of the gift, that's what's exciting. Uh, it shows a healthy parish when you get a large percentage of your people saying, we care, we will support this. So you don't realize how happy that makes me feel. So what's going to happen is this week, you will receive the letter from the Bishop's Appeal. Uh, I would ask you to take some time to pray and think about your gift. Uh, and then to, to send it in as soon as possible. The sooner we, have, uh, we reach our goal, the better it is. And even if you could just do what you did last year, but also know that a lot of people have lost their jobs over this past year and are really struggling. So maybe you can do what you did last year and then maybe add 10 or $20 onto that. That would be a wonderful thing just to add a little thing for those who are struggling. And next week, we'll see the Bishop's Appeal. And I would just thank you all for what you have done in the past and what you will be doing this year.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers of the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Praise to the Lord. It's number 331. Praise to the Lord. 